when a client comes to me and wants some help with staying consistent and or get motivated enough to start some sort of new health regime, right? Whether it's eating better or working out, movement, whatever it is. I can sense their irritation with me <laughs> when I suggest that we start with the sort of mindset work because we're it's frustrating because we're in this sort of society that is very action oriented and it's kind of like, let's just get going on something and then the thing will happen, right? Once I get moving along with it, then it's just going to naturally, I'm going to, but that just, it just doesn't work that way. The thing is this, in order to, do the thing that you want to do that is of benefit to you uh, and your health and your well-being. You need to start with your relationship with yourself. And it sounds really cheesy and I know, and it can be really frustrating because it's not like getting right to what seems to be the necessary step, which is either food or movement, but it has everything to do with the end result of food and movement. Let's just take, for example, a pet or your child or a plant, something that you are um, responsible for, the well-being of. So you got to water your plant, you got to feed and water and walk your dog, you've got to feed, water and walk your child, <laughs> right? So your, your sense of responsibility for this living thing motivates you to take care of it. But it takes more than just a sense of responsibility. It also takes love, respect, compassion for these things that you know that if you don't do these things to take care of them, you, what you're going to witness is going to be really upsetting and and it's it's a it's a, it's like abusive, right? so you you know that they will wither if you don't take care of them in a certain way, and you do it out of compassion for them because you don't want to see them suffer. You do it because you love them and care about them and you want what's best for them. Well, I find it interesting that we are so capable of doing that for our pets, sometimes our plants, not always, <laughs> and our children. But yet when it comes to us, we just can't seem to get there. We can't seem to consistently do the things that we know are best for our health. And also... When we want to treat our dog to a little whatever, like uh, the other day I was I was at the Starbucks and I was sitting on the patio and through the drive through this little dog was slurping away at a at a I think they called puppuccinos it was just like a a freaking little tiny cup of whipped cream man <laughs> this kid this dog is just like loving every minute and then the next car was a kid with a great big frappuccino going on you know like so we treat them as well but if we treat ourselves we just beat the shit out of ourselves for doing so and think that we're terrible people for having the ice cream or the frappuccino you know and like oh my god i've got to go you know 20,000 steps <laughs> or i've got to go do this crazy workout to burn off you know like it's this punishment reward thing that we've got going on. It's kind of crazy. So we're, we have the capacity. We've, we prove ourselves of this by how we treat our pets and or children, but yet we just don't apply it to ourselves. So I want you to just give that some thought. And I, and that's why this mindset piece is so valuable because once you discover your own self-love or at least self-like and your self-compassion that you're compassionate towards yourself and that you respect yourself because let's face it we we respect our children and our and our and our pets that's why we take care of them there has to be respect there right we have to respect something in order to even feel compassion for it or even to like it so all of those things and you trust yourself that you're going to take care of your child your plant or your or your pet and as you start to implement the things based in self like or love and respect, you're going to start trusting yourself because you're going to see that you are showing up for yourself the way that you show up for the other things that you care about. You need to care about yourself. You have to give a shit about yourself. So it's really valuable. And I'm going to just say like, totally necessary. Like the, I think it's a non-negotiable that you have to be able to talk nicely to yourself and really yeah give a shit about yourself enough of, like, like try and get rid of the negative self-talk that'll never go away by the way we all negative self-talk ourselves like that's just the way it is but we don't attach to it we don't think that we're that thing 
this is all really valuable work. And so I guess what I'm suggesting is rather than thinking you got to go right to the action line of I've got to cut out whatever, or I've got to add in whatever, I've got to get up at five and do my yoga, or I've got to go to the fitness class at seven o'clock, even though I'm so fucking tired, I can't even imagine, but I'm going to drag myself there. And I don't even want to know what conversation you're having in your head doing that, you know, calling yourself lazy or, you know, pushing yourself like a drill sergeant to get there and all of this stuff. Like, no, no, it's, that is not the motivating factor here. That is not going to keep you consistent in this for the long haul and the constant I'm doing this for me. You need to start with your relationship with yourself. So just investigate that a little bit, be open to it to sort of like, huh, how do I talk to myself? How do I treat myself? Do I even like myself? Do I respect myself? And if you don't start looking at reasons why you should, why should you respect yourself? What have you done? What good things have you done? We're so aware of the bad, quote unquote. Start giving your brain some evidence of all the amazing things you do. And they're little and the little ones are the most awesome ones. Okay. Start there. Start building up some self-like if you can't get to love, build up some self-respect, some self-compassion, be kind to yourself. And then you're going to get into this sort of self-trust and you're going to see, oh my God, I'm doing it. Cool. And then it just becomes who you are rather than this thing you've got to do. It just, this is who I am. I'm, I have a dog. I, I walk my dog. It's just who I am. It's not like I have to, rem it's not like, I don't even have to think about it. It's just, it's part of my DNA now. And that's, what's going to happen. It's going to become part of your DNA that you take care of. You are the steward of this body and you take care of it the way you would your plant, your kid, or your dog, cat, pet, rabbit, guinea pig, lizard, <laughs> Pet. All right. I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps. If you want some help with this, I am here, but you have to email me in this situation. I have no idea. I can't contact you. <laughs> so you just send me an email. It's sarahgwellbeing at gmail.com. And we just have a conversation and see if I am the right life coach for you. All right. I'm going to awkward look for the button. There it is. Okay. Go forth and prove to yourself that you are worthy of yourself, like your self-compassion and your self-respect. And that will build to self-trust. And then you'll see yourself showing up for you. It's pretty awesome. All right. Bye for now.